So the topic of this slideshow is going to be meiosis and the process of crossing over. Let's get started. So let's talk about the process of meiosis. You know, cells that undergo meiosis actually start diploid, but by the end finish as haploid cells. So meiosis is the process where the, uh, the chromosome number of a cell is reduced by half. Meiosis is the process that creates gametes. And in the picture, the orange thing that kind of looks like a basketball, this would be the female gamete, an egg cell. And the other one that looks kind of like a tadpole, this would be the male gamete, the sperm cell. Meiosis makes the sperm and egg cells. Now the end result of meiosis will be four cells, four haploid cells, and each of them genetically unique. And so we start to maybe uh, understand maybe the answer to that phenomenon from just a moment ago. Let's go into more detail. So let's go through the cell cycle involving meiosis. So interphase, in this animation, we're gonna go through this cell. The cell is gonna go through interphase and it's gonna start with four pieces of DNA, two black, two red. Now the black DNA is, uh, is maternal, meaning from one's mother, and the red is paternal, meaning from one's father. And in this animation, we're gonna follow six fictional genes in this cell. And so first, first of all, gene A, is going to be homozygous dominant two capital alleles gene b is going to be heterozygous one dominant one recessive gene c is going to be homozygous recessive two recessive alleles gene d homozygous dominant gene e is heterozygous and gene f is heterozygous now these six genes are fictional again but in a real cell we have thousands humans have about 21 22,000 uh, genes among our 46 units of DNA that we have. Now this, in this animation, this cell is gonna have uh, six genes, A through F, and we're gonna follow four, uh, four units of DNA here. And so interphase is really the same as before. And before we learned that there's a G1 stage where the cell will grow as it's growing right now, and ultimately create additional organelles, extra vacuoles and lysosomes and such. And then comes the S stage or the synthesis stage. And this is where DNA replication occurs. Watch what happens to the DNA. A duplicate copy is made. So even though this cell started with four units of DNA, right now, currently, it has eight units of DNA because it just duplicated its four copies to make eight. And then we come to the G2 stage where the cell grows uh, some more. And so interphase prior to meiosis is very similar to interphase prior to mitosis, which we previously learned. So now let's go into the steps of meiosis. What we're going to see is that there are two stages of meiosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So let's begin with prophase 1. Some similarities to first mention with mitosis. The nucleus is going to dissolve. So in my animation, there goes the nucleus dissolving. And then the chromatin, the spaghetti, loose, uh, stringy, linear versions of DNA are going to coil and wind up into chromosomes. And so there we see that just happen. Very, very similar to what happened in prophase of mitosis. Well, a couple additional events take place now. One being what is called synapsis, the pairing of homologous chromosomes. You see the two chromosome ones, one in red, one in black, those are homologous because of the same chromosome number. Same with the two chromosome twos, they're homologous. So in other words, you could say the like chromosome pairs with like chromosomes. Spindle fibers pull the two chromosome ones together and the two chromosome twos together. And this creates groupings that we call tetrads. There's a tetrad involving the two chromosome twos, there's a tetrad involving the two chromosome ones. But why would this happen? This sets up what is called crossing over, the exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids. Watch the chromosomes of tetrad one, three, two, one. Notice what just happened is portions of maternal and paternal chromosomes broke off and reattached with one another. Let's watch that again in tetrad number two. Crossing over helps to recombine and mix up the genetic material of the chromosomes. And you think about why is this so important? This helps to create 
a lot of the genetic diversity that we find within a species. This helps to ensure that every sperm and egg are genetically unique. But now my question is, well, but why is this so important? Why is having genetic diversity within a species so important? And, and the answer is pretty straightforward. It, it helps to uh, prevent the species from extinction. If all organisms were the same, we would all be susceptible to the same diseases and the same influences that might harm one. Let's go on into metaphase number one. And the tetrads are gonna align along the equator of the cell. Spindle fibers will pull them to the center, the middle line of the cell here. And that's really all there is to it. If we go into the next step, The next, the next step being anaphase number one, the tetrads are going to be separated. Spindle fibers, which I didn't picture in this animation, the spindle fibers will separate and pull the chromosomes of the tetrad. Some of a couple of chromosomes went to the left, other couple of chromosomes went to the right. And so entire chromosomes, if you notice, were pulled to opposite ends of each cell. Okay, let's go to the next step, telophase one. So as we look at telophase number one, we're gonna see that sometimes the nucleus is gonna regrow, sometimes, and you'll see why in a moment, why sometimes it does not, it's really no big deal. Um, cytokinesis is gonna divide this one cell into two cells. There goes the cytoplasm dividing into two cells. Notice that each cell contains one of the two homologous chromosomes right there. Now, look at my note at the bottom. It says currently eight units of DNA per cell. That's not correct anymore. Currently, now there are four units of DNA per cell. There's two chromosomes in every cell, but every chromosome has two chromatids. So two chromosomes times two chromatids each is actually four units of DNA per cell. Let's continue on. So now we start the next round of meiosis. This is really called meiosis two. It starts with prophase two. That's a Roman numeral, by the way, prophase two, not prophase 11, that's a Roman numeral two. And at this point, it really is just the same as mitosis. The nucleus is gonna redissolve. So that's why sometimes it doesn't even bother to reform during telophase number one. If the nucleus does reform, then it's just gonna redissolve during prophase number two. As we move on into the next step, the next step being metaphase number two, the remaining chromosomes are going to be pulled to the equator line of the cell. There they go. They're pulled to the, the middle line, the equator line of the cell right there. So as we move to anaphase number two, really this is the same as mitosis. The chromatids are gonna be pulled to opposite ends of each cell. Now, if we bring up a picture of Gregor Mendel, this is where we're gonna see the law of segregation. The alleles, see how the two A alleles are kind of paired next to each other? The two B alleles are kind of paired next to each other. The alleles are gonna segregate from each other. There they go. And eventually those two cells will divide into four. And this is why we inherit only one allele for a gene from each parent. Okay, looking at telophase number two next, it's really the same as mitosis. We're gonna see cytokinesis is gonna divide these two cells into four cells. Then we're gonna see the nucleus begin to regrow. The nucleus will regrow in all four cells there. And then the chromatids, which are still coiled up, the chromatids will unwind into their loose linear versions of DNA known as chromatin. There they go. Look at the note at the bottom where it says currently four units of DNA per cell. That's not correct anymore. Notice how every cell, because of the second round of dividing, now only has two units of DNA. Look at the note on top. We started this animation with the cell with four units of DNA, and now the cells have two we've made haploid cells. So the end result for genetically unique haploid cells, if you pause the video and browse over the A, B, C, D, E, F alleles, you're gonna notice that all four cells are different from one another. That's because of the recombining process. That's because of crossing over 
which took place way back in prophase number uh, prophase number one, which we talked about earlier. So there you have a, uh, a description of the stages of meiosis. Here's a practice video. You know, pause the video, try to answer these questions, and I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.